Welcome back, everybody, This Week in America. Thank you for joining us, website thisweekinamerica.us. As promised, coming up in the program, an interview with a man who has the world's most interesting job. He once was a ship captain, like Captain Phillips, had a real-life fight with pirates at sea, and now he helps CEOs and their companies with business transformation to boost profits and do it rapidly. He has more than 400 projects. They've spanned approximately 84 countries and five continents with clients ranging from Fortune 500 companies to innovative green technology companies. And he says he has more fun every day at work than he could ever imagine. Vivek Sood, our guest back on the program, representing the Five Star Business Network. That's his book. Vivek, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Thank you, Rick. It's a pleasure every time to talk to you. Well, it is. Are you still having fun every day? Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, that never stops. The fun never stops. This is a, this is a beautiful job. Like I said last time, uh, uh, doctors, save, doctors save lives and we save livelihoods. So well, definitely. that is so true. And when you go in and you're able to offer a lifeline to some of these companies, it really has to, it has to mean so much to them. Vivek's website is five. That's the, uh, the number five, starbusinessnetwork.com. The book is called The Five Star Business Network. Information, of course, at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Let's start off by talking about something that, that's very important. We touched on it the last time, and you, you've said that the world economy is changing forever. And that should get people's attention that is now changing forever. Talk about that, and, and why all of a sudden are we seeing this shift? Look, there are many factors. I guess the biggest factor really is the internet uh, or the connectivity. Global connectivity has made uh, services uh, and knowledge available to people that was never available uh, ever before. So in a way, basically, you cannot trade on information asymmetry or uh, uh, in, other ways, in other words, the arbitrage opportunity or ability to fool somebody because they have you have more information than them does not exist anymore. Now, that is probably one of the biggest shifts that has happened on a global level. Um, now, uh, along with that, of course, China and India, two very big nations, uh, each one of them is 1.3 billion people or so, they are now finally joining up the global economy after about 150, 200 years of being in a hiatus, in a sort of. Now, such a massive shift on a global basis is definitely going to change. It's definitely going to cause an upheaval in the global economy. There's, there's no two ways about it. Where are, I mentioned that you've worked in a number of countries. I think you've visited and traveled to 150. You've got clients that span 80, 85 different countries. In looking at where we are in the United States, Vivek is coming to us uh, from Australia as, as, as we're doing this. Where are we in the United States, most of our companies, are we positioned in good shape or are we playing catch up with this? Rick, I mean, the best U.S. companies are still some of the best in the world, no doubt about that. Um, I mean, you look at companies like Amazon or Apple, they are definitely some of the best companies on earth. Uh, but there is also another hard fact, which is that U.S. being a very large company, uh, country of nearly 300 million people, as well as a very rich country, has never had to look outside its shores uh, for business, in a way. A small to mid-sized enterprise, even a large enterprise, really looks outside U.S. almost as a addendum to its core business. So U.S. is seen as the core business, and the rest of the world is seen as almost like incidental business. Now, that is probably one of the biggest problems. The shift to globalization hasn't happened in the minds of many large companies, let alone small or mid-sized companies. Our guest on This Week in America, Vivek Sood. His website is 5starbusinessnetwork.com. Five is the number five, and the book is called The Five Star Business Network. World's foremost authority in supply chain, uh, global supply chains. And let's talk about that. Exactly what are we talking about here when we're talking about global supply chains? Okay, global supply chains are very easy. I mean, you look at uh, an iPhone, for example, iPhone 6, which has uh, just been released uh, by Apple. Uh, um, obviously, one of the biggest markets for that product is the United States of America. But when you look at the product itself, well, it is designed in California. Um, the parts come from all over the world. Uh, there are companies in Taiwan, in China, in Malaysia, and many other locations which are 
manufacturing parts which finally are assembled in a place in China. And that's how this product is being made. And then it is being sold all over the world. Now, that is a massive shift from how computers were manufactured when Apple first started manufacturing computers in California. So that's what I mean by globalization of supply chains. How are businesses uh, responding to this shift? Are most of them on top of this? Some are definitely, like Apple, the example I just gave you, they yeah. are totally on top of it. Uh, they, they, not only they are not only using global enterprises to manufacture, they are also using global enterprises to design the products, to in fact, even understand the consumer preferences around the world and uh, create products that are acceptable to consumers around the world. Now, others are still very much uh, thinking of it in a very narrow way where uh, people inside the company are telling the CEOs, and I can even give you an example of a Korean company, for example, who's uh, uh, one of the biggest um, competitor to Apple. They are still thinking in a very narrow way. Uh, they, they want to do everything in-house, uh, perhaps just within a small uh, national boundary. And more they try and do that, more they fall behind their competitors. Vivek Sood, our guest on the program on This Week in America. We're talking about his book, The Five Star Business Network. Business to business network are something that we talked about in the last program, talked about in the book, and something you stress as being really important. Explain exactly how that is. It sounds very simple, and some businesses go, yeah, I'll get a Facebook page, and I'm, and I'm part of the, this new wave, this new phenomenon. Talk about business to business networking and how it's done right. Okay, so what, what people think of LinkedIn or Facebook as a very large networks, yes, which they are, and they're very useful as well. But when you look at uh, business to business networks, the scale is absolutely staggering. It's mind boggling. Uh, Facebook is worth about, let's say, hundred mil hundred billion dollars. But when you look at just uh, one industry, let's say automobile industry, the global supply chain of automobile industry runs into trillions of dollars. So all the ancillary unit providers, which are based in uh, Far East, for example, combine that with all the uh, assemblers and designers, and suddenly you have a global supply chain, which is worth trillions of dollars and works like a clockwork to put the next uh, model of automobile out in the marketplace. Um, and this is just one example. You can think of chemicals industries. You can think about pharmaceutical industries. You can think about retail industry. Each one of them has a very diverse, a very widespread, very uh, tightly knit global business to business network, a global supply chain, which is uh, working together with each other, enterprises working together with each other to put the final product in the hands of a consumer. In fact, you've said that and most that is, miss the network that's hidden in plain sight. It, it really, when you think about it, what, it it's sometimes maybe too obvious. It, it's, you're trying to make it more complicated than what it is. Well, um, I mean, I'm actually trying to make it simpler than what it is, Nick. Uh, in the end, they are actually very, very complicated in networks. I mean, think about it this way, that um, today, if you wear a leather jacket, the cow comes from somewhere, the leather is stand somewhere else. Uh, after that, it is cut in another place, uh, perhaps uh, 2,000 miles away from there. Then it is stitched into jackets in another place. And finally, it is packaged and sold in totally different place. It is far more complicated than most people actually think. And management of that uh, global scale as well as scope of business to business network and actually extract profits out of it is is an art it's not it's not uh, it's an art and it is a science it doesn't happen just by coincidence vivek sood our guest on the program his book is called the five star business network his website five star business network.com of course information available at our website this weekend america.us and you can link on directly to vivek's website and get information why do so many companies seem to to get it wrong and, and to struggle Rick, I mean, look, look at what is happening inside the companies. If you uh, look at the senior executives or CEOs, they have come through a rank, uh, they have come through the ranks in a, a pyramid structure, and they are used to working in a particular way. Um, now, when they go to, they face very intense pressure, by the way, from their 
uh, investors from the Wall Street, from the private equity firms who, who want the profits, who want to take advantage of the shifts, massive shifts in the global uh, business scenario. However, when they go internally to talk to their own teams, they, the internal teams basically have done business in only one way in the past. And that is the only way they know of doing business. So what they see around them, if you are a, a C-level executive, you see a massive waste around you. You see massive uh, loss of opportunity. And you just don't know how to wrap your arm around it and how to actually squeeze out the waste of the system and how to actually get rid of the confusion and complexity um, which has crept in because of this globalization. And that is perhaps what is the biggest blocker uh, in my mind. When you go in and you deal with companies, and I mentioned in the beginning, you deal with companies of all sizes all around the world. When you go in and start laying out your ideas, and again, you mentioned sometimes the corporate culture, it's very slow to, to respond. What kind of response do you get when you go in and you say, okay, here's where I think you should be going. Here are the, the changes that really need to be made to be competitive in the marketplace today. What kind of, what kind of response do you get? Rick, uh, the most important thing we do for our clients is basically get rid of the complexity. So what we do is very clearly we lay out the supply chain in a very systematic manner as it exists right now. And then we look at uh, several different models of supply chain uh, within their industry, but also outside the industry. And we have now a track record of 15 years of doing this within our company for a variety of uh, in industries. And we have these models in our mind, but we also work with internal teams to create these permutations and combinations. And finally, we choose the best model that works for this particular company. And in each case, inevitably, we end up saving humongous amount of money for these uh, C-level executives and their companies. You know, what's interesting is so often you hear of companies and when they decide they're going through a transformation, it's downsizing, it's reducing force, it's redundancies, it, 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 things like that. Uh, can you downsize your, your way to success? Never, very, very rarely. In fact, in my view, uh, if you have come to a point where you have to go through mass redundancies, and just last week, a very large IT company had to declare uh, mass redundancies again, uh, in my view, it's already too late. Um, somebody has missed the obvious writing on the wall. Uh, the massive waste within the company has been overlooked for long enough so that situation has come to a point where uh, the knee-jerk reaction is that oh, the Wall Street or investors want results. What's the best, quickest way to get results? Let's, let's do downsizing. Now, that's a very temporary solution. In, in the end, that will end in eroding the core competency of the business itself. We talk about companies that are getting it wrong and struggling. Let's talk a little bit about some of the companies that, that you could cite that are, that are doing it right and, and how they're going about doing it because they're, they're thriving and they're positioned to take advantage of this global economy. Oh, yes, there are lots and lots of companies who are doing it. And I continue to have these conversations with these companies and work with them. Yesterday, I had a very interesting conversation with uh, three different companies. Uh, each one of them is a massive company in its own right. And each one of them is actually on the path uh, upwards. Um, yes, many of them are sort of uh, trying to stumble their way into that kind of uh, new paradigm with the new supply chains. But many others have become very, very systematic about it, how to take the supply chain from supply chain 0, 0.0 to supply chain 1.0 to supply chain 2.0, and then further on to supply chain 3.0. Now, these are all a little bit technical terms. I understand that. But there is a massive difference between these. So it's almost like uh, uh, saying three different models of uh, an aircraft, for example. Interesting. Vivek Sood, our guest on the program. The book is called The Five Star Business Network. It's available on Amazon all across uh, the country, all the places where books are sold, and at his website, which is fivestarbusinessnetwork.com. It's the, uh, the number five information available, of course, at our website. Vivek is a supply chain and corporate strategist, managing director of the Global Supply Chain Group, 
Uh, a couple minutes left in the program. Let's talk about some of the benefits of, of business to business networks. We, we've, we've talked about the, the role they're going to play in this, in this transformation. It's a network that, that's there for you. Let's talk about uh, some of the benefits, tangible benefits that businesses will see trying to, to engage their business to business network. Absolutely. So Rick, first thing is of course, as you cut out the complexity, you create much better understanding of the very complex business to business networks and supply chains in the business. And with the understanding comes an ability to manage, ability to control, ability to actually have an influence, much more influence than you ever had before. That's probably the first benefit. Now, once you have an influence, you can actually start moving the ship in the right direction. So I used to be, I used to work in a ship. Imagine if every time you turn the rudder, you don't know which way the ship is going to turn just because you don't have the control. Um, once you have that kind of control, you can actually start taking the ship in the right direction. Um, and of course, uh, with that comes higher profitability, much more uh, happier customers, for example, because your uh, service levels are much better, more innovation, creating better products faster, working with your suppliers and suppliers suppliers, as well as working with your customers to create uh, products which the consumers actually want, um, to get higher margins on those products, to actually customize the supply chain in a highly segmented manner where uh, each supply chain is structured for a particular customer segment and getting the max maximum profitability out of the segment because now they are much happier with what they are getting than they were ever in the past. And I see this on a daily basis, by the way. Well, yeah, and this is not theory that you're dealing with. You have, what, over 400 business transformation projects and a success rate of 100%. So you're actually able to take this into the marketplace and literally turn businesses around. I'm sure keep some businesses uh, fluid and allowing them to, to hire people to keep that, you know, to keep the business going. Absolutely. That's what energizes us. That's what gets us, gets us out of bed every day in the morning and say, hey, uh, it's like a doctor who's very happy about saving lives. I mean, we say we are saving uh, livelihoods. Um, in the end, uh, having that kind of impact on businesses and creating much more effective as well as efficient businesses is uh, a reward in itself. Well, it's a pleasure to have you back on the program. Vivek sued our guest. The book is called The Five Star Business Network. His website is fivestarbusinessnetwork.com. It's the number five. Information, of course, at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. The book's available at Amazon all across the country. Information, and you can order the book by going to the website, fivestarbusinessnetwork.com. Vivek, it is always a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. Look forward to having you back in the program. Thank you, and keep smiling. Thank you, Rick. Uh, <laughs> very nice to talk to you again, and have Thank a very good day. Thank you. I love the passion for what you're doing. It's a pleasure to have you on the program. You're listening to This Week in America, website thisweekinamerica.us.